Hello, today we're going to be going over to Mesa Ridge 26BH, and we're going to be starting right up front here with our tongue jack. Uh, basically, your first switch here is just going to be a light, so if you had to hook up at night, you can turn that on to see. The other one here is how we would extend and retract. It's how we get on to off the tow vehicle, but this is also how we level from front to back. I do like to always recommend while you're still hooked to the tow vehicle to make sure you're level from side to side first. Uh, they have a little stick-on levels you can put on the coach. We usually like to recommend just a carpenter's level right inside the doorway. Uh, but you may have to put some blocks down, but use that tow vehicle to roll, to roll onto those blocks. It just makes it a lot easier. And then once you have unhooked everything from the tow vehicle and it's pulled away, then level front to back with this guy. And then lower your stabilizer jacks. Those guys are located on each corner of the camper and it's a three-quarter socket. It's easier to put it on the drill, but they do provide the manual crank for that. Next, we're going to have our propane tanks. you got two 30-pound tanks. These guys are both full minus what we use to test the propane system with. But this guy here is going to be your regulator. Basically, this guy does tell you what tank you're using. And if when the tank is empty, this little eyelet here would show you a little red flash card to show you that it's empty. Uh, this one is designed, you can't have them both on, but the only problem is with this model regulator is that it will pull from both tanks and then they'll just both end up being empty on you and you just don't want that. We do like to recommend one tank on at a time, so that way you know when the one tank is empty, you can turn it off, flip this guy over to the other tank and turn it on. Then back behind there is going to be where our battery is located, it's 24 series deep cycle marine RV style battery. All right, then as we come around over here to the center, we're going to have our passenger's front storage compartment. Uh, previous owners did actually set up nice little racks to hold your fishing poles, but as you see it is passed through the store. This guy here is going to be the back of your furnace. Uh, it is always recommended that we would put mud dauber screens over this, but you don't want to try to block this because it's the intake and the exhaust for the furnace. Next you're going to have your fresh water fill. It's basically gravity fed. You stick the hose in and let it fill. You do want to read the monitor panel inside for when it does read full to shut it off. You don't want to wait for water to start coming out of here because over time that can cause damage to both the outside and the inside where this is connected. To drain the fresh water tank is going to be located right here and all you do is just turn this knob to start draining the water. It is basically already emptied. I filled it and ran most of that water all through the system. So when we go inside, our monitor panel is just going to show that we have water in our tanks at this time. These two white tubes that are underneath here are considered to be your overflow and breather tube for the fresh water tank. Okay. Looks like our sticker lied to us. It says it's a low point drain, but that's not the case. All right, so next we're going to have our tires. So with the tires, it is always recommended you want to make sure that these are always topped off to 80 PSI. But you do want to make sure that you are checking the lug nuts on these guys. These guys are torqued to 100 foot-pounds, and they should be checked at 50, 100, and 200 miles. And I do recommend that you do want to recheck these after 50 miles because these guys were taken off the unit for having new tires put on. And that is a... Uh, that was a three-quarter or a 19 millimeter. Then we're going to have our vent for the stove. This little flat piece inside does have to be popped open for the fan to properly work. This guy here is going to be the back side of your refrigerator. Basically, there is nothing you would have to do in here except maybe check for mud dauber nest and maybe blow it out to keep the debris and stuff out of like that out of there, dust, things like that, so it can properly work. Other than that, it's usually service only. Then we have our 30 amp power cord that does come with the coach. This guy here is going to be what they like to call your water station area. It's got a little guy here to kind of help keep it propped open for you so you can do what you were doing. But that just folds off to the side and it will fold down. There's a little slot right here. These guys here are designed so you can have your water hoses. But even up here on this window here, it does show you, you got your cable and satellite hookup. That's going to be your black tank flush. This is just a little light. As you see, it ain't super bright, but it gives you something that you somewhat kind of see at night. A secondary switch for the water pump. So if you're out here, you're trying to uh, winterize your coach, some things along that line, uh, you can turn the pump on from out here. There is also a switch on the inside. And then we're going to have this lever here, this blue guy. Basically, it's either for city water, it's going to be down. If you're trying to fill the fresh water tank, you can turn it this way. A lot of times, the only time you're going to use this section of the fill the fresh water tank is if you're already hooked to your, you're at a camping spot already, 
that already had the full service hookup, so you already got a hose hooked up to this guy. Well, instead of unhooking the hose and sticking it in the gravity fed, all you do is just turn off that pressure and then switch it over to tank fill and turn it on. One thing to note is when you are using the city water hookup here, you do want to make sure that there is a pressure regulator at the water spigot. From there, your options of an inline water filter, so it's filtering the water for you before it, go, it goes into the coach. And then your blue or white water drinking hose. Hook that guy up, turn it on, be ready to use the system right away on the cold side. If the water tank is empty, then you'll have to wait for the water heater to heat up before water would start coming from the hot side. For the black tank flush, I do always like to recommend you have a pressure regulator on the spigot as well when you go to use this guy. The reason for that is because there is a plastic check valve on the back side of this. Too strong a water pressure can damage that check valve and create a leak in the camper. But then from there, go out and buy yourself a black hose. Black tank, black hose, it keeps it simple. Then you're gonna turn it on. When you go to turn this on, you do, and there's even a caution sticker right here that tells you, you wanna make sure your sewer hose is all connected and you're gonna open your black handle to start draining the black tank before you turn the water on for the black tank flush. If you try to turn this on and that tank's already full, that water is only gonna come out of one of two places. It's either gonna be the toilet, or if there's a good seal on the toilet, it will come out of the vent stack on the roof. Both situations will be bad. So always make sure that termination valve is in the open position before you turn the water on for the black tank flush. Once you see that water coming out good, clean, and clear, you can turn off the water at the spigot, unhook your hose from there, so that the water in here can drain out. The reason for that is because there's usually a hose from either this long to even this long, if not longer, that goes to that check valve. But there was no pressure to push that water through the check valve. So it's got to drain out somewhere. Then once that's done, you would just close your black and then pull your handle for the gray. Next is to come around. You got your where you would hold, uh, license plate holder. This is, does has the observational backup camera and the monitor is inside the coach. I'll show you that once we have stepped inside. As you see, it is labeled here as another low point drain. Oh, and that's gonna be right here. And those lines, the pull those valves or the drain is gonna be located inside. I'm gonna show you that once we have stepped inside. It does have the spare tire holder or spare tire. Um, previous owners stored the spare tire underneath our bunk bed and I'll show you that once we have stepped inside. It does have a quick connect down here for an outside barbecue grill. Make sure it is a camping style because the camping style ones are ideal for low propane flow. And you've already got a regulator on the coach that pretty much has the uh, propane flows at about 12, what they would say 12 to 13 water columns. So it's regulated. Uh, if you get a normal bar, uh, gas grill, um, it may not properly work or operate because it's not getting the proper propane flow. So just please keep that in mind. Next, we're gonna have the water heater. For the water heater, this guy is real nice and simple and basic. Uh, it is gas only. But when you go to drain this guy, you're gonna lift this guy up here to relieve the pressure. And then you're gonna pull this cap out. You're always gonna come from underneath when you go to pull that cap out. This guy is usually a 15 16 uh, socket. I have seen some of these plastic ones are now starting to come as a seven eighths. Uh, so just, it's gonna be one of those two sizes for that. <clears throat> Next we have the awning. Uh, each awning arm actually does have the speakers inside of them. And uh, I'll show you how to, basically when you turn on the radio, it's gonna come on automatically for you. Um, you would have to go into your settings to change the front, the rear, to be able to uh, turn off the outside speaker, especially if you're gonna watch a movie, but we'll talk about that once we've stepped inside. We do provide an outside 110 outlet for you. And we'll come back to the door in just a minute. Basically, you got your other storage department here on the other side. Uh, and then they do have, it says solar ready here, so it's a quick plug and play, where it would just plug in and the solar panel would just sit on the ground. Basically, it's designed to just help charge that battery for you. That's basically all it does. All right, so back in our entry door here, first we got our steps. This guy just folds and locks right in, real nice and simple. I always go from the side. Uh, when you go to open this, you're liable to smash your knuckles right here if you try to pull it from the center. So with our entry door here, got two sets of keys. One of them is a spare that was made. 
So it's just a silver key, but it is squared. Uh, but basically these are gonna be our entry door keys. For the door handle, basically the key will turn to the right and you'll pull it out and it locks the door handle itself. For the deadbolt, this guy gets turned to the left and there's a small click. Basically that tells you that you locked it. Oh, this one ain't gonna let me do that. Most of the times when it's in the lock position, you're unable to pull the key out. You'd have to bring it back to the up and down position to properly pull that key out. You turn it to the right to unlock. And then for your compartment doors, that's just gonna be a standard 751 key. This guy does have a holder on the back side here to hold the entry door so it wouldn't fling around on you. Just like so. The screen door here, just push to release. This guy here is just for your deadbolt when you're inside. And then your handle to unlock to open the door from the inside. And this part here is what you grab the door to shut it with. I've seen a lot of times people try to use this handle here to shut the door while it's popping open and it won't shut properly. You grab from the back side. All right, as we step inside, we're gonna start right here. Uh, basically, we got our control panel or monitor panel here. And it does tell you the status of the battery. Our fresh tank is gonna be empty. As you see, we got some water in that black tank and in our gray. Uh, this guy here is gonna be for the gas option of the water heater. You turn it on, this DSI fault light will come on until it is fired on propane, then shuts off. This guy here is so that you can operate the water pump. You're only using the water pump if you're using the fresh water tank. If you're hooked to city water, you do not need this guy. Next, we're gonna have our pretty much our two light switches. Our one right here is gonna be for our awning lights. And then our other one here is for our inside lights here. And then this guy here is to bring our awning in and out, extend and retract. All right, we're gonna come back this direction now to the bedroom. This guy is pretty common and simple, basic. You got your center light here that you would turn on at the buttons in the center. Same with the night light reader underneath. Each side does have your little closet area on both sides of the bed. You do also have storage up above. Each side does also have a 110 outlet on each side. And I believe this guy had some storage underneath as well. This guy here is going to be your fire exit window. So if you couldn't make your way to the entry door, you still have a way to get out. This guy would just simply comes across and it opens up. This window is on a hinge so that it will pop open so you can get out. This guy here is designed so you can pull the screen out so you wouldn't damage the screen. But I'd rather hear the screen got damaged instead of someone getting burnt. Then we got our hook up here for the TV. Kind of shows you where they had their previous TV mount from the previous owners. Because uh, usually this mount, this sticker, a lot of the times, they just slap it on a wall. So sometimes it's not in an accurate location, just to be honest with you. Next, we're going to have our door here. This is to keep it in the lock position during travel. But then this guy here just slides across and shuts. So the next, we're going to have our little sofa area here. This guy basically also folds into the bed, just by, bed by slip, lifting up and it will fold down. A lot of times you do have to grab the belt to help guide it in. <clears throat> right over here on this side is going to be where our LP slash carbon monoxide detector is located. This guy you should test every, <clears throat> excuse me, 9 to 14 days. And all you got to do to test is simply push this button. From there, it's going to perform its test and go off again. And then it should go to green. So the reason why you want to test this is you do want to make sure that it is properly working. Uh, these guys have a life expectancy of seven to 10 years. I have seen these guys go out before that, but you do want to take emergency precautions if this guy does go off because uh, it is potentially sensing either carbon monoxide or propane gas inside the coach. Uh, if this guy does go off, you do want to take the emergency precautions. The first person out of the door is going to turn off the canisters, your main propane source. The second person is trying to get everything that breathes out of the coach, but they're also trying to open a couple of windows. We're not trying to turn on an exhaust fan or anything along those lines because we're not trying to create a spark. From there, we're going to get 50 feet away for 15 minutes 
come back, one person's going to come into the coach. The first place I always like to recommend is check the stove first. The reason for that is because they like to put these knobs right here on the outside to where if somebody was just leaning against them, you push these knobs in, they're going to start releasing propane into the coach. A lot of times, as you see, I just leaned against it and it already started to churn. So you always just got to be mindful of that, okay? Um, if you guys come back in, though, you see that this... This is none of these are on, everything's all good. Uh, you turn on your propane, but it does start going off again. The only other place that propane actually gets connected inside of your coach is the furnace. The furnace and the stove are the only two places that are actually connected inside the coach. Your fridge and your water heater, the connection ports are on the outside. So, next, you got your sink here, you got your drawers, storage underneath here as well. When you go to winterize your coach, I believe it was this guy here, you will pull this guy out right here, and this is where your water pump is going to be located. As you see, they have already got the hose here. This here will go into your gallon jugs of antifreeze, but there's going to be a valve line down here that you have to churn. There's two of them. One right here, that's going to stop the flow from the fresh water tank, and then you would open this one so it would pull the antifreeze from your hose. From there, you just use the water pump to winterize. You do want to make sure that your water heater is also bypassed. I will show you guys that here in just a few. And the fun part of trying to put these guys back in. Oh, I got lucky. You, I was going to say, you did that really well. I can never do that. <laughs> uh, nice thing is, is, the previous owners did leave some nice little aftermarket things. So you actually got a paper plate holder. This is actually a really nice thing. I love those. Um, area to hold your sponges on the other side here you got your uh, paper towel holder uh, you got some hooks there same within the ba uh, bathroom and you'll see that in just a minute you do also have storage up above <clears throat> microwave is pretty self-explanatory uh, we do like to recommend setting the time on here so if you guys go out you come back you see that the time has not been set it shows you there was a power failure at the campsite we would like to look into finding out if that was from the campsite itself or if it was from the electric company. Then we got our hood range, our light, and our fan. And then for the stove, this guy is pretty simple. All you would do is just turn this guy to the flame icon, and then this here is gonna be a spark igniter for it to light. Now for the oven, you're turning this to the pilot position, and it even tells you to push and hold it in, and keep it pressed and held in while you light it. Well, this sadly does not have the spark igniter at the bottom, so you do have to use a barbecue lighter when you go to light it. Uh, just simply go down here, and it's going to be basically right here is where you're going to put your, your flame or your lighter. Once it's lit, keep it pressed and held in for 7 to 10 seconds, then set your temperature. Next, we're going to have the fridge. With the fridge, it has two settings. Basically, you got your on and off right here, but then it has the option of auto or gas and the auto setting is always looking for 110 and if it, for some reason there was a power failure and your propane canisters are on it will automatically swap over to propane you won't know that it fired on propane unless this check light pops on if this check light pops on it tells you that it did not fire on propane you can also have it on just propane by pushing the button where it come out and it will swap over to gas as you see our auto light just kicked off but we like to leave that in the auto um, if you're hooked to that sure power, you're already paying for the electric, so why not try to use it? You can adjust the temperature if it seems like it's too warm or too cold just by sliding this guy up or down. But make sure this wire here stays inside this piece. I've seen numerous occasions where their uh, fridge wasn't properly working. I come in, this guy's either hanging down here at the very bottom or it's sitting in the water. And it's not properly doing what it's supposed to. So always make sure that that guy is in that piece. And if I ain't mistaken, <coughs> I should Excuse still me. have a frozen water bottle. So there's proof that your freezer is working very nice. All right, as we come back here towards the bathroom area, you got your area here where you would got your medicine cabinet and your sink. Storage down below as well. And then this is where your GFCI is located. So basically, if some of your outlets are not working in the coach, come and make sure this guy has not been tripped. 
I've seen it numerous times where someone's trying to blow dry their hair, but someone's also using an electric skillet, trips it every time. So here in the bathroom, you have another light switch right here. The first light switch closest to us is gonna be just our fan. Our other one is the light switch. As you see, they got another hook here, but then they got one of these nifty little guys. I think they had a Swiffer or something like that in here to help keep that or even a broom and it can stay hidden behind the toilet. With your toilet, you always do want to try and make sure there is some kind of liquid in that bowl of the toilet. You would likely press on this pedestal to add water. There is no water in the coach anymore at this time, but you would likely add water or add the water so you could do your business all the way down with flush. The reason why there's a little bit of blue there is because I want, since it's a used unit, I like to put a cleaner in there to try to help clean the toilets. And uh, once we are done with our virtual, we're going to go dump these tanks. Uh, I also do like to recommend that if you spray some Pam on the bowl of that toilet, uh, it helps everything slide down easier, makes it easier clean for the cleaner. Uh, but just don't confuse kitchen pan with bathroom pan. It's a little unnecessary or unsanitary. Uh, then we got our shower here uh, slash bath. Uh, you have your, you know, you turn it on, then you would pull this guy up. As you see, it won't stay up because there ain't no pressure to it at this time. But you would pull this guy up for the shower setting. This guy actually has two settings. You got your normal shower setting. And it even has a massager setting on it, but then also an off position. The reason for the off position is because your water heater is only six gallons. And uh, basically, if you have it on that massager setting, you're going to use that water up in probably about three minutes. But that to stop and reduce that flow of water is really helpful so you can try to get the most out of your hot water. All right, so then we have our bunks. Each side has a 110 hookup on them as well. And there's, oh, there it is. So we got a little light up there and down here as well. They do provide another fire exit window as, as well. So if they couldn't make it to the door, they still have a way to get out. But then underneath here, you'll lift up. We're gonna have where that spare tire I was telling you about is located. But then there's gonna be two handles right there. Those are the low point drains. So you would pull those guys up to drain all the water out of the system. A lot of time that you're using that when you go to winterize. But I do also like to recommend that you always wanna get all the water out of the coach when you're done camping. Especially if you're gonna be away from it longer than nine to 14 days. Uh, the reason why is because water can become stagnant or bad and start creating that rotten egg kind of smell. When that happens, then you got to sanitize your lines. And to sanitize your lines, the nice thing you can do is you can put a quarter cup of bleach in the fresh water fill and then fill it about two thirds full. Run that water through your lines and let it sit for a couple of hours, then drain it all out and flush it. Uh, usually hooking up to the city water is really good about flushing that out. But when you go to winterize, you're going to open up those guys, then go through and open all your faucets starting from the furthest from the pump or even from the low point drains and just open each side, hot first, then cold. And what's that doing? It's releasing the pressure for that water to, to, to exit out. Then you're gonna close that off, hook up your uh, winterization setup, turn on the pump and then winterize your coach. Once you are done, you do have to take the pressure off of those lines, okay? So you'll have to open up your faucets once you're done winterizing, just don't take that pressure off and open these guys up for just a few seconds. Then the other knobs over there are gonna be for the bypass lines for the water heater. As you see right now, that one in the middle is actually closed off and the top two, or the top and the bottom is open. So when you go to close that or close it off, you're gonna, the one on the top and the bottom are gonna be up blocking that water flow. And the one in the middle is gonna be in line with your water line. So that way the antifreeze will go up and around and doesn't go into the water heater. And it's just a lot of antifreeze if you accidentally do it. Most times, if you can get all the water out of the coach, you can usually winterize this guy with usually anywhere between two to three gallons of antifreeze. If you're using more than that, you definitely either left the low point drains open or you forgot to bypass your water heater. I did forget to show you guys this down here. This is going to be your fuse control panel box. So basically everything that you have to have sure power for to work is going to be on your breakers. And they do have everything labeled for you up I believe it's on this guy right here. And then everything that runs off the batteries on the fuses. And once again, they have that all labeled for you, which one is which. All right. Next, we've got our thermostat here for, so basically when you go, this is a touch sensitive kind of panel. 
on the back side of this there are foam pieces when you're really jamming those buttons those foam pieces get damaged and then it doesn't properly work but when you first go to turn it on it'll give you an option for the fan it shows you auto but you can have it in high you're just a second that fan will kick on there it goes had to send out a little delayed message or it's got low fan but we always like to leave it recommend that it stays in auto that way the air conditioner will also kick on and off once it has reached desired temp also if this fan is in high or low and you go to turn on your furnace the fan on the air conditioner will also come on it's not it's not the air conditioner is coming on it's just the fan but what it's doing is it's pulling that cold air in from outside and blowing in here making it feel like it's the air conditioner that's running but that is not the case if you ever come across that problem just make sure your fan is not in high or low make sure it's in auto next you got your tv hookups here you got your tv antenna booster so with the tv antenna booster where i showed you outside at your water station you had connections for campground cable or satellite if you're using the campground cable you do have to turn this booster off just by simply pushing this button and then it allows that cable signal feed to come through the top one here is going to be for the satellite these wires here would connect to your tv so you're able to watch a movie to do so you just hit this guy right here it drops down and then you're able to put your movie in <laughs> must have had it muted <laughs> uh, but basically with this guy like i said you would go into your settings and i believe it was the front and rear that you adjust to turn off those outside speakers, especially if you're watching a movie. Uh, if you guys are trying to spice up the night uh, and you guys put a risque movie in there, you really don't need the other campground here in that movie. Uh, if you just push this button, it mutes it. You gotta press and hold to actually turn it off. This guy here also breaks down into a bed simply by pulling this guy up. You would take these legs, pull them guys up and they just sit on the ground. And then the table would just sit on these guys right here. And then from there, you use these back cushions to fill in the space. Don't worry about these guys. We just got to put those back on your air conditioner. This here is going to be that monitor panel for the, um, for the backup camera. You do have a remote for the radio. And then inside here is going to be most of our appliances or instructions for the appliances of the coach. And it does actually look like you might have a manual as well. A lot of manufacturers have swapped to paper manuals. All right. And then from there, we have made our way back to the door. Oh, we do have our fire extinguisher right there near the door. Uh, from there, um, hopefully this video is knowledgeable and informational for you. If you guys do have any questions, please feel free to call us, and we will do our best to answer those over, for you over the phone. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.